皆さんナマステ。日本語の u g c の e p g パチャラへようこそ。私はカナ・アニタと申します。Today's module is about the first historical compilation of Japanese called The Chronicles of Japan. In Kojiki, We studied that in the preface, which was written by Ono Yasumaru, that Emperor Temu was a visionary who had a v i d interest in history, and it seems he was not satisfied with merely his orders for the compilation of Kojiki. He visualized the importance of some historical work in order to establish and enhance the authority of the state or the Yamato state and the imperial family. Because in the dealings with Chinese and Korean dignitaries, they were questioned about the historical authenticity of their. Country, especially the imperial family. So during his lifetime, he ordered for the compilation of another work in 681. This again could be completed only after his death and was presented to the throne as Nihonchoki, also called Nihongi. It was completed in 720. Merely eight years after Kojiki was completed. Background According to an entry in Nihon Shoki, in the Great Hall of Audience, where Emperor Temu conducted his official affairs, he ordered for the compilation of another text containing the chronicles of emperors and the matters of antiquity. Here one may ask as to why Emperor Temmu ordered for the compilation of Nihon Shoki after he had already entrusted the task of compilation of Kojiki. Why he designated a team of 12 members of the imperial family and ordered them to write a chronicle of the emperors and of matters of high antiquity. In other words, the reason is sought for this initiative by the same person for two different works of an identical nature. The reason lied in the commendable vision of Emperor Temu. He visualized the domestic and external efforts as two distinct spheres. This was the time when the Kentu Shi and Kenzu Shi were actively in vogue, thereby promoting to a great extent the interaction between China and Japan. It is quite obvious that the members aboard felt the need of some concrete factual references or historical references about their country and the rulers. In view of such a situation, the emperor, in order to authenticate their supremacy as the actual rulers of Yamato, descending from the lineage of the sun goddess, had strongly felt the need to produce an official anthology of national history in good Chinese or Kanban. The language, as we have studied, Of Kojiki was Hentai Kanbun, in which the Chinese characters were used phonetically as well in order to represent Japanese sounds and otherwise for actual meaning. The single handed endeavor would have lacked appeal on the diplomatic, and as we know, Kojiki was based on a single handed Endeavor by Onoya Sumaru, who recorded whatever the reciter Hedanoare 
spoke and obviously it could lack the appeal of a diplomatic type or on diplomatic front kuchiki was documented more as evidence of the native traditions to be used within japan the emperor temu designated a team and entrusted them with the task of this work the team comprised of 12 members who had a long and rich tradition of family lineage of being princes or the ministers of state including prince kawashima toniri shinno son of the emperor in whose name the work was presented to the empress gensho in 720 let's have a look at the highlights of nihon shoki nihon shoki originally consisted of 30 volumes and one volume that contained the genealogical table giving the dates of each emperor nihon shoki originally had 30 volumes and one volume that contained the genealogical table giving the accurate dates for each emperor there was no preface and it reflected in the absence of any comments by the author or its compilers that the objective of its compilation was not different from that given in the preface of kojiki as the same emperor temu ordered for both the works nihon shoki was written in pure chinese in the style of chinese historical chronicles to provide a standard text of history so nihon shoki is rated as the first work of japanese history for its valuable and authentic information on historical developments and symbolize the authority of the japanese sovereigns on the diplomatic front the sources available to the compilers of nihon shoki were the chinese and korean historical accounts like pak che gi the record of pak che and the other written materials which were much more comprehensive and authentic as compared to the source of single ha- as compared to kojiki also in nihon shoki the information is provided in a more authentic style while giving the dates wherever possible even the popular beliefs and legends are not generalized and all existing versions are presented along with the available facts kojiki nihon shoki also begins with the mythological age to describe the events of the age of gods the mythological accounts of the age of the gods in the first two volumes are like this first the text it starts with the origins from the beginning of heaven and earth and then the birth of seven generation of deities the last to appear were izanagi and izanami who descended to onokoro island married and gave birth to the islands of japan the names of the islands thus created are honshu shikoku kyushu oki sado and so on these two deities next produce the sea rivers mountains grasses and trees followed by the chief deity the sun goddess and the tsukiyomi the moon deity and susanono mikoto the storm deity 
the sun and moon ascended to heaven to take up their rule while susano no mikoto was sent to the earth on account of his violent acts from takamahara he had to descend to the plains and he settled in izumo before retiring to the earth Susano went up to the plain of high heavens Takamahara to say farewell to his sister sun goddess Amaterasu no Mikami she was afraid that he was coming to seize the plain of high heavens from her so she put on armor and waited for him he dispelled her doubts by making a vow with her and reciprocally producing children sometimes the violent acts of susano displeased his sister sun goddess and she withdrew into the heaven rock cave and would not open the rock door thereupon the whole world became dark and there was no distinction between day and night the 8 million deities consulted and performed a great festival in front of the rock cave inviting the sun goddess out this story has common element with those of various people susano in turn went to headwaters of the river he in izumo where local deities asked for his help to subdue a eight forked serpent yamata orochi he then built a palace in izumo and fathered the deity onamuchi with this nihon shoki concludes volume 1 volume 2 starts as the second part of the age of gods it starts with the deity nini gi no mikoto grandson of the sun goddess who left his heavenly abode and clove his way through the eight fold clouds of heaven to descend to the peak of takachiho at so in huga prefecture efforts were made to clear the way to the central land of reed plains for the heavenly grandchild the second attempt failed but the third try was successful the deity onamuchi presented to the heavenly grandchild the spear that he had used to subdue his own land and also prayed for the future of the heavenly grandchild then he retired into the distant land of hades the heavenly grandchild married princess kashitsu the daughter of dt oyama zumi she becomes pregnant in a single night and the princess angry that the heavenly grandchild doubted that the child was his set fire to the patrician heart the three deities that were born were hono susori hiko ho ho din and hokari the elder brother hono susori had a talent for fishing and the younger brother hiko ho ho dimi had a talent for hunting they exchanged their talents but the younger brother did not catch anything and also lost his brother's fish hook out of helplessness and frustration he sat on the shore and wept then the god of sailors shiotsuchi appeared and inquired the reason for his crying on being told about what had happened he made a small boat of closely woven bamboo stalks and put him on this boat then he said sit on this boat and go to the sea where you will find the palace of sea god 
which is made of fish scales. At the entrance there will be a well. Next to it will be a Katsura tree. When you reach there, climb the tree and wait. The younger brother did exactly as he was told. There he retrieved the fish hook. He was able to retrieve the fish hook there with the help of the princess Toyota Mahime. She was the daughter of a sea deity and the princess fell in love with the younger brother at first sight and the sea god welcomed him in a grand manner and married his daughter to him. Like this three years passed and then the younger brother Hikohodemi returned to his land with the jewel of the and a grandson of Hikohodemi became Emperor Jimmu, the first emperor of Japan. The Age of God covers the first two volumes and ends here and it is followed by the historical period which is in the form of a chronological accounts of the rules of the various emperors of Yamato from starting with Emperor Jimu to the late 7th century Empress Jito. Let's have a look at the each emperor. Emperor Jimu who ruled between 660 BC to 585 BC is the central figure in the account of volume 3, the historical age. The main events of his regime are accounted as he subdued all the resistance and pacified the entire Yamato region. He moved eastwards from Hyoga and finally settled on Mount Unebe, which is the palace. At his palace at Kashiwara, he ascended the throne in 660 BC. He ruled for 76 years and there are numerous legends associated with him. It is assumed that the various legends and the other information about Emperor Jimu would have been taken from the available records of fundamental dicta, Yamato Fudoki, as well as personal accounts of the families. Subsequently, the reigns of various emperors starting with Emperor Suize are covered in Volume 4 and it seems that still the country was not united under a single ruler and most of the accounts appear to be scanty as well as legendary, quite like the ones given in Kojiki. Next, the reign of Emperor Sujin who ruled from 29. He ruled between 29 BC to 70 AD and his history is included in volume 6. The main event of this volume are the arrival of the envoy from Silla, a Korean kingdom, the wrestling matches between two played which is considered to be the origin of sumo wrestling as well as the story of the origin of Haniwa. Haniwa were the clay ornaments which were found in the tombs besides various other objects. Next the account of Emperor Keiko who ruled between 71 to 130 AD with that of Semo who ruled between with that of Emperor Semu, who ruled between 131 to the year 190, are found in Volume 7. Emperor Keiko had as many as 80 offsprings who were mostly sent to the 
provinces as the administrators. The most outstanding ones are of Yamato Takeru, the young hero who had many expeditions to his credit. And his heroic deeds are described at length in Kojiki. Next, the rule of Emperor Chuai is accounted in Volume 8 about his travels and expeditions. The accounts of Empress Regent Jingo are found in Volume 9, which are vivid but tend to be realistic at a later point. These throw light on the relationships with Korean kingdoms of Baekje and Silla, as well as internal conflicts in each one. In Volume 10, the events during the time of Emperor Ojin are accounted. These are based on some source material like fundamental dicta and are realistic. In Volume 11, the accounts focus on Emperor Nintoku, who was a philanthropist and is exalted as a sage. During his time, the skills brought about by the immigrants from Korea were used for making roads, waterways, bridges, etc. Focus of Volume 12 is the Emperor Richu and Hanse, who were the sons of Emperor Nintoku and many affairs about the life of their imperial family like the power struggle for succession, love affairs, of the princes, etc., are accounted. In Volume 13, the accounts of Emperor Ingyo and Anko are found. Ingyo was the son of Emperor Nintoku, and their affairs are recorded, although the most significant event that was merely mentioned without details was the assassination of Emperor Anko. In Volume 14, it is the Emperor Yuriaku, known for his bravery, who avenged the death of Emperor Anko and also destroyed his opponents, is discussed. Yet, he is given to be a good and God-fearing person who loved his subjects. In Volume 15, among the accounts of Emperor Seme, Kenzo, Ninken. Those of the first one are scanty and those of the latter two, Kenzo and Ninken, are accounted in the form of a dramatic story about the two emperors wandering around in disguise in their capital. In volume 16, Emperor Buretsu and his rule between 498 to 506 is accounted. A number of violence acts of the emperor show the decline in the imperial values. Emperor Keita's rule was between 507 to 531 and it regards the fifth generation descendants of Emperor Ojin which was found here in volume 17. These are the detailed one accounts. These detailed accounts are based on the entries of Korean records. The period of those emperors is not covered in fundamental dicta, but since most of the events are based on the accounts about the diplomacy with Korea, it might have been taken from the accounts of Korea. In volume 18, Emperor Ankan and Senka records are accounted which are scanty. The main source, volume 19, Emperor Kimme had 25 children out of which four succeeded as emperors. His reign is specially memorable for its glory and the records were based on the Korean work of Pakchigi. It was during his reign that Buddhism was first introduced in Japan 
through the presentation of Buddhist image and scriptures by the Korean envoys.